Welcome to this episode of Locked In. Apparently you guys really liked my using my gravel bike as a road bike video, so I'm gonna be expanding on that in a few different parts in this little mini series, since you guys apparently like that content a lot. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to take two different styles of wheels and make them work on your road or gravel bike seamlessly so you don't have to constantly readjust your brake calipers when switching possibly between a 650 to a 700 or multiple 650s or multiple 700 wheels depending on what you have at home. All these principles are gonna apply. So if that's something you wanna see, please stay tuned. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I'm gonna be taking my center lock Industry 9 Ultralight 650 wheels that are currently on my Cobalt Warhawk and then making it seamlessly work with my 700C set of wheels. Now these are a Industry 9 hub, but they are a six bolt and they do have different styles of rotors. And this does make a compatibility issue with me having to adjust my front and rear caliper every single time I switch this out. So I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks and what you're actually gonna to need to do this. So my first little tip is you're gonna need a set of brake rotor shims. Now they do make shims for center lock rotors and six bolt rotors, but I'd have to say it is a lot easier to find six bolt rotor shims than it is to find center locks. So if you have two wheel sets, I would definitely firstly recommend to set them up with the center lock rotors and wheels and then shim your six bolt rotors. Now if you cannot do that because you have two center lock wheels, then you're gonna need to order some center lock rotor shims. I will link both of those in the description below if I can find some center locks since they are harder to find. Six bolts are a lot easier. So keep in mind, these shims are going to push the rotor away from your hub. So if you have two different wheel sets, you want to shim the rotor that is closer to the hub than your other wheel sets. You're gonna have to do that on your own and find out which one is like that and then shim the one with the closer rotor to the hub. And I'm gonna be going over how easy that should be for you to set up at home. So as you can see here, I have my 650B wheels installed on my Cobalt and I have perfectly aligned the front rotor in the front caliper. So you can hear that there's no current brake rubbing, meaning that it's centered in there enough to not rub on my brake pads. Then what you're gonna do is simply take this wheel out. Then you're gonna grab your other wheel, no matter what size it is, throw it into the bike, through axle back in, then see how your rotor's looking inside your hub and spin it to see if you hear any noise. And as you can see, it's definitely rubbing on the rotor. If you can't really tell on camera, I'm sorry, I'm doing my best here, but it looks like the rotor is actually rubbing completely on the pad that is on the left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the wheel, remove the rotor, and I'm gonna put two shims in just to start with. Now this process is a little lengthy with a six bolt rotor because you have to remove all the bolts to put the shim in, but again, it is worth it in the end when these simply swap beautifully back and forth. So you're simply gonna remove your wheel, then you're gonna take your T25 tool or whatever bolt head you have on your disc rotor and remove it. Again, if it is center lock, the same rules are gonna apply. So then you're gonna basically clean your surface or re-grease your center lock hub if needed, but mine's still pretty clean. Then you're gonna simply add your shims. Again, I would always start with at least one or two. I believe these are half millimeter or 0.25 millimeter. I'll put it on the screen, which, whichever they are exactly. So again, these are very, very thin. They're not gonna add a lot of thickness to the rotor because you're talking millimeters here when you're looking in your caliper. So you wanna do this little by little, but with how much it's contacting my rotor, I definitely wanna start with two. So when adding your six bolt shims, a little tip is to put the bolt actually through your rotor, then through your two shims, and then orientate the wheel so that you can do that at the top so they can hang nicely to easily align all the shims and your rotor. Then you wanna start all your bolts, doing them finger tight at first. Then you wanna hit it with your tool of choice. This is where I really like a ratcheting tool like this Fix It Stick. And depending on when you're watching this video, I do have a Locked In Favorite Friday review of this tool. And this is specifically where a ratcheting tool really comes into handy. So after you put your first two set of shims, you're simply going to add your wheel back into it. And obviously you wanna hope that you got the first attempt right with how many shims you need. Again, this may take a few times to get perfectly right and there is a little bit of trial and error with both your front and rear wheel, but these same principles are gonna apply for both. So cinch up your wheel. Make sure that you fully tighten all your bolts or your center lock bolt. You don't wanna put it in loose because that is going to affect the distance that the rotor sucks into the hub. And you wanna make sure it's just like how it's gonna be when you're riding it. So after that, you simply wanna spin the wheel and see if you still hear any brake rub. So it's definitely rubbing less and the wheel is spinning more freely, but I think I'm gonna need at least one more shim. So now let's find out if the third shim was the trick and let's give her a spin. And it looks like we have success. It, I do hear a little bit of rotor rub, but it's only at one point when the rotor is spinning around. 
that means there's a little bit of warp in the rotor that I'll be able to hand bend back with no problem, especially with these lightweight weight weenie rotors. So this rotor spins nice and freely. It doesn't rub anywhere on the caliper. And you can see this wheel is rolling basically forever. And that's basically it. So essentially that's all you're gonna have to do to align your wheel. Now I did only show you the front wheel in this video, but you're gonna be able to apply those same principles to your rear wheel on your bike. So keep in mind, if you're doing like I had to, three shims in the front, I would then start with three shims in the back. So in my experience though, I have noticed that the rear wheels seem to need an extra shim compared to the front, but don't take my word for it, try it for yourself. But again, I would start at that three shim starting point in my experience. So if you have two, use two. If you have one, use one and go from there. Now, typically these kits are gonna come with six shims in them. So if you're worried about possibly needing more or if you do your front wheel and you notice you need four shims, let's say, then I would consider just reordering another set of shims just to have as a backup when setting up your rear wheel. So keep in mind, you may need more than one pack. Also a side note, when you're getting center lock shims, those for whatever reason tend to only come with four packs of shims in them. Don't know why they don't come with more than that. Maybe it's because you can't do more than three or four in a rotor. I'm not exactly sure. Let me know in the comments below if you guys know the answer to that. So I hope you like this video and this is gonna be the first step into setting this up. In the next video, I'm gonna be talking about how to make two different gear ratios work on your gravel bike so you can use it for road and gravel with the same exact chain without having to cut it. So if you wanna see that, please make sure to hit notifications, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram, links are in the description below, as well as if you wanna support the channel because I am trying to do this full time, I do have a Patreon with a lot of cool perks at the different tier levels, so make sure to check that out. And thanks for watching another episode of Locked In.